Okay, we're talking about the high set exam here and specifically the math section. So um, you may or may not know this, but uh, the high set, which is a high school equivalency exam, um, you know, much like the, the task or GED, um, you know, they're pretty challenging exams. I mean, you do need to know a considerable amount of uh, algebra and geometry and the applications of these, um, you know, uh, math um, uh, courses, if you will. So one of the big things in math, right, is word problems. So you you, you got to be, you know, thinking to yourself that you very well are going <laughs> to encounter some word problems uh, on the high set. So this is a, a problem here I have. Um, we're going to solve this problem in this video. But before we do, I'm going to give you four steps that will um, help you organize your strategy to solve a a math word problem. Now, these are general steps because every problem is a little bit different. You know, you can't, there's not one exact formula uh, to solve all word problems per se. But if you follow these general steps, you're going to be able to solve uh, the majority of word problems and it's going to kind of structure your thinking. So let me go over the steps here real, uh, real quick and then we'll apply these steps to solve this problem. But before I actually do that and you want to just try to solve this problem on your own, uh, let's go ahead and read it, and then we'll um, we'll go over the four steps. So, Jill is eight years older than her brother, and next year she'll be twice as old as her brother. So, how old is Jill now? Okay, so <laughs> if you want to pause the video and try to figure that out on your own, I'd say go for it. But with that being said, <clears throat> let's get into the four steps that you need to know how to solve these word problems. Okay, so the first thing is... You really want to read the problem at least twice. Okay, so if you read it once, you're you know, it's generally not enough for you to really comprehend the, the question. Even though you're like, oh yeah, I got it the first time around. Trust me, you know, uh, it's always a good idea to at a minimum to read any problem twice. Okay, because you want to double check, did you understand it correctly? And it's not even a bad. Uh, Thing to even read it three times or whatever it takes for you to understand what the problem is asking. That's the big thing here. Now, of course, on the high set, you're under, uh, you know, like time uh, pressure. So you really want to be focusing, but don't just read the problem once and just go read it at least twice, organize your thoughts, make sure you understand what the question is, and then move on. Okay. So let's take a look at our second tip here or step with these word problems, and that is to draw a model, okay, or write out a table. Some way start writing out, organizing in a visual way what the problem is asking, okay? So a model could be like a sketch, you know, like let's say it's a, a, a problem about a car traveling a certain distance, you can draw the car and here's a building, or if it's a uh, some sort of um, table, in other words, you might want to put something like here. This we're going to use this in this particular thing. Let's say there's a car, this is the truck, and this is their speed, and then you can kind of like draw out some sort of table. Now this takes practice to do, but you need some sort of way to organize your uh, the information in the problem visually. Okay, it's too difficult just to think about it in an abstract sense. You want to write something out. Okay, so some sort of model, some sort of table, or some other. Um, uh, method that's uh, kind of logical and clear to understand. <clears throat> now, the third tip is you want to write an equation, okay? So what you're going to be doing, you're going to read the problem, you're going to understand what it's saying, then you're going to organize your information in a model or a table. Now, the, way, the reason why you do that is so you really know what's going on and you kind of establish your variables because the main goal uh, of that is to be able to construct an algebraic equation. Okay, so you want to write an equation out, but you're not going to be able to do that successfully you have, if you haven't organized the information uh, in the problem. Okay, so now once you have this algebra equation established, then you obviously need to have the skills to be able to solve that equation. Okay, so that's part of this step as well. So you write the equation out and then you solve it. And that brings us to our last step. And that is to make sure you answer the right question. <laughs> so just because you constructed an equation doesn't, and you solve that equation too often, what people will do, students will do, they'll be like, okay, I got the answer to this, this equation. 
and they'll just say they'll select that as their answer. That is a big no-no, okay? I'll, and, and teachers, I don't want to say like teachers love to see students mess up. That's not the case. But they're going to put they're going to put down the wrong um, the wrong answer choices for very common mistakes. So it's a real shame when students like do everything right. They they write their correct equation, they solve it, but they just didn't take the additional time to make sure they were answering the right question. Okay, and this uh, particular problem I think will illustrate that point uh, pretty good. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and um, get back to this problem and see how we can apply these steps uh, in this word problem. Okay. So we already read this problem. Uh, we'll read it again. So Jill is twice, uh, Jill is eight years older than her brother. So currently, right now, right? So Jill, Jill is eight years older than her brother currently. Next year, she'll be twice as old as her brother. How old is Jill now? So I'm thinking, okay, how old is she right now? Not how old is she next year, right? So that's what the question's asking. How old is Jill now? Not her, not her age next year. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and illustrate how we can construct a, a, uh, a table with a problem like this, okay? Now this just takes practice and the more problems you do the better off you're going to be uh, doing that uh, doing these problems so let me just go ahead and construct a little table like so here and you'll see this in a second okay so this is the brother's age and this is Jill's age okay now we're talking about two different time frames we're talking about uh, their age right now and then we're talking about next year, right? Next year. So that's going to be like plus one year, correct? From uh, from their, their now age. You understand? Okay. So this is like a good table. So we're talking about uh, the brother and we're talking about Jill and we're talking about now and we're talking about next year. This is, again, an illustration, a visual way to see this information. Now let's get into it. So... With word problems, obviously you're going to be applying using algebra, so we have to establish a, a variable. So what we don't know is the brother's age, and we don't know. We just know the the relative different the relative relationship between the brother and Jill, but uh, um, right now and then next year. But we don't know the brother's age, so let's just put the brother's age as X, okay? Because Jill is eight years older than her brother. Well, I don't know her brother's age, but I do know that Jill is eight years older than her brother right now, right? So what would that look like algebraically? Would it be X plus eight, right? So whatever her whatever age the brother is, Jill is uh, eight years older than her brother. So this right here is a very simple way to kind of write that out. Now, knowing that, Let's talk about what their ages are going to be next year. Okay, so what would their ages be next year? Well, the brother, okay, is going to be one year older. So whatever his age is, he's going to be one year older next year, right? And so is Jill. So that Jill is going to be X plus eight plus one next year. Okay, so right now... We have a good little uh, table here, and what we're trying to do is to organize our thoughts such that we can do what? Write an equation. So the key is this. So what we've used so far in this problem is this uh, information. Okay, actually, let me do it this way. We've only used Jill is eight years older than her brother. Okay, and then we have also talked about their next year age, but we haven't used this part of the problem. Okay, next year she will be twice as old as her brother. So, in word problems, word problems always leave clues, and these clues are, are there for you to be able to write an equation. So, you're going to use your, your table or your figure. And then you're going to go back, and this is what I mean, you got to read the problem more than, uh, than once, and look for those clues so you can construct an equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. Let me give myself some little room because I like to keep everything, you know, kind of squeezed in here so we can kind of look at everything at once. So a good 
uh, relationship was this next year. So let's let's focus on next year's uh, part of this table. Okay. Uh, so next year, uh, let me do it this way. We're talking about this and we're talking about this, right? For next year. So Jill, which is her current age, is what next year? X plus eight plus one. That's how old she's going to be next year. But she's going to be twice as old as her brother. So if her brother is that, if her brother has this age next year, twice as old is going to be what? Two times X plus one. So whatever his age is next year, if you multiply it by two, if you double it, that's going to be uh, Jill's age next year. You understand? So, so here's the brother's age next year. If we multiply it, we double it. That's how old Jill is going to be. And this is our equation here. Okay. This is our equation. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and solve this equation. So let me go ahead and do that. And of course you need to know how to solve this equation. So X plus eight plus one is going to be X plus nine. And this is going to be 2x plus 2. I'm going to move this 2x over to the left-hand side. It's going to give me a negative x. And then I'll move this 9 over to the right-hand side. That's going to give me negative 7. And then I'm going to divide either side of the equation by, um, both sides of the equation by negative 1, because I don't like the, this negative x. That's going to be x is equal to positive 7. So if you took a different steps to get to this answer, then then that's good. And then you're able to solve this basic equation. Now, if you can't solve, if you didn't, you weren't able to solve this basic equation, then you got some work to do because obviously word problems are applications of a lot of different um, skills uh, in algebra that we learn. Okay. So now are we done? So X is equal to seven. We're happy. We go on our multiple choice selection or our fill in and we just put down seven. Would you be correct? <laughs> no, you would not be correct, right? What is the question answer? We got to make sure we're answering the right question. How old is Jill now? Okay, so X is equal to seven. That is the age of the brother currently. Okay, so he's seven years old, and Jill would be uh, if, if X is equal to seven. So Jill is seven plus eight, right? Yeah, because uh, Jill is eight years older than her, her brother's age. So. 15 is how old Jill is, okay? So you can kind of then, of course, we can look at next year. You can see how this all works out. So this goes to my last point. Make sure you answer the right question, all right? So this is a pretty common and typical uh, word problem. Again, in algebra, you know, um, there's a very common type of problems. This is a, a age problems, uh, rate, speed, velocity, time, problems, mixture problems, area problems. There's a, like these classic word problems. If you understand those and you know you, you do a decent amount of practice, you're going to be pretty comfortable with a lot of these word problems that you might encounter on a high set. So let's go and wrap this up. And um, again, if you're struggling with math for the high set, um, I'm going to leave you the description of my high set math course. I call it the uh, uh, high set math accelerator course. I'll leave a description in the, uh, the, uh, this video below. You can check that out. Um, been very successful. And there's, like I said, you, you're going to need um, to put in the time studying to really be, you know, to increase your odds, from, you know, of passing a high set. The worst thing you could do is just go in there and just hope you pass. Okay, that's just going to lead to a lot of frustration. A frustration, and you're going to do yourself a disservice by not really learning the math that's going to serve you well throughout your life. But um, anyways, with that being said, I do a ton of these type of videos, so please consider subscribing. And if you do, make sure you hit that bell notification so you get my latest videos. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And please comment. I do get a lot of comments on my videos, which I'm grateful for. Try to read as many as I can, but it gives me ideas on making uh, videos uh, that will benefit you in the future. Okay. With that being said, I appreciate your time. Hope you learned something and have a great day.